So what does, you, what does your job actually include? Like, what is the title and what kind of stuff would you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, and in a way, I, doesn't, I don't really have a title. I'm, well, technically, I'm a rep um, in that, although I've been working um, in the industry since 2005, it's not a full-time uh, job Monday to Friday. Basically, I get called in per project. Um, and that's because I'm a musician as well. So sometimes I have gigs or concerts that I need to do and I'm not available to work. Um, so it, for me, it's the perfect job because I can work as much or as little as I want to work. Um, so I don't really have a job title because I do quite a few different jobs. Um, the main job is test screenings. So that is basically, um, we will go to an area where we're gonna show a film. So for example, um, one year is not, not too far from here, Kingston. Um, there's a place called The Rotunda and they have the View Cinema in there, you know it? <laughs> and um, we often do test screenings there. So um, I will spend maybe a week before walking around Kingston and trying to get uh, different types of people to come and see the film. Uh, and that can sound easy because you're giving out free cinema tickets, but actually it can be quite tricky because you're trying to get a certain type, uh, a certain demographic. So you might want um, 25% 15 to 18 year olds, and then maybe 25% 19 to 25 and so on. So um, it's about trying to get the right numbers of people. And then what we do is we bring that group of people to come and see the film, and they watch the film for free, and get to see it months before it comes out. And then at the end of the film, uh, we run down the aisles with lots of questionnaires, and uh, they pass those along, and then they spend about a good 15, 20 minutes filling out the uh, questionnaires, and then we do focus groups. So that's the, that's the main job. Um, what I'd really like to do is write my own film one day and the great thing that this job has taught me is not so much just the writer's mind which a lot of people have or the director's mind which again a lot of people have but that kind of the, the way that you can market a film a lot of people don't really know that unless you've worked in the industry because you can have a great story you can have a, you know, great actors you can have a great producer, director but then at the end of the day you've got this great movie, hopefully, that you've made, but then how do you get it out there? How do you find the right people that are going to like your film? So I'm trying to sort of retain all this knowledge that I've had over the years so that one day I can um, write and perhaps direct my own film, but also then I'll know like, how to go about getting it to the right places. Not, uh, well, I suppose, actually, yeah, I mean, there's, there's marketing courses that you could do if you wanted to go in that direction. Um, I actually just um, got the job through the stage newspaper. I mean, it was literally just there. I'd left drama school. I didn't have a job waiting and ready for me. Um, and in between auditioning for um, plays and TV and stuff, I needed to earn some money you know, to pay the rent. So I was just flicking through the stage newspaper and it said, do you love films? I was like, yeah, I do love films would you like to work in the film industry? It could be kind of cool. And it just sounded like a really interesting job, and so I applied, and they needed people to go out on the streets and give out their uh, cinema tickets. Um, and that's how it all started, and I've, I've stayed with them. Um... Right, well, day-to-day uh, -day basis, uh, I work full-time full freelance as a writer. So uh, I'm hired to do uh, sometimes a film screenplay, sometimes TV scripts, sometimes ghost writing, sometimes pub, uh, novels, sometimes theatre stuff, and uh, sometimes I run workshops, uh, writing workshops, which I do run colleges and universities. So the, on a day-to-day -day basis, because I'm freelance, I don't have a boss. I may have producers or directors who tell me, we want you to do this, 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 but... I never wake up and have to go into an office. I wake up and I think, oh God, I really don't want to do any writing today. I just want to lay in bed watch Sky Sports. That's my ideal day, to be honest. And then what I say, I, I've just been hired to, I, I've just been hired to do a job for Indian Summer Films, which is a rewriting a script called Toy Soldier they've done. So I'll give you an example of a day-to-day -day basis of that. Wake up, I then turn on my laptop, 
check my emails to see if I've had any emails from the producer about what specific scenes they might want rewritten. And then I start writing. First five, ten minutes of writing anything. So this is on my tod. Well, obviously, people can it, but... <laughs> So I'm on my tod in my room and uh, start writing. The first five, ten minutes are horrible when you, when you wake up and write because you just think, you know, I don't want to be doing this. Before you know it, five, ten minutes have become five hours and you're buzzing and you're absolutely loving it and you've written about 20, 30 pages. So it's all about getting over that initial hurdle of forcing yourself to get up to write and set the laptop. Because you're your own boss, you don't have someone there going, come on, you've got to do this now. So it works both ways. You've got to be very self-motivated. And then I will basically write for about four or five hours, grab something to eat, because breakfast is for women. <laughs> okay, <laughs> grab something to eat for lunch. Uh, Go, then go back to writing, and sometimes I'm writing to about 2 a.m. So I'll start around 11 a.m. And then basically write to about 2 a.m., yeah. That's, if I'm hired to do some screenwriting um, for someone else's project, obviously there's deadlines, so sometimes I may have to get certain scenes done by, say, a certain point of the evening, because the director or producer may want to read them, and then they, sometimes they want to have a Skype conversation that evening with what I've just written. Once they, before they can start principal photography, which is when, once they've got the funding, once they've got the funding, screenwriters fear is 5% of the budget. So an example is the film which, is, uh, which they're now prepping and going to be shooting the um, start of the year in Brazil, which I wrote called City of Shadows. Uh, that's a 500k budget. So they have to pay me 25k on top of all the option money they've already paid me development money for basically the 5% of the budget so they can shoot it. That's all the way the contracts and legalities work. So, I mean, and that's low end, you know, that's independent British filmmaking. If you think about Hollywood films where the budget's like 100, 200 million, take 5% of what the screenwriter gets there. So the screenwriter's going to be getting anywhere between six to seven figures. You know, that's why I want to be writing, <laughs> writing in America rather, rather than writing in the UK. Um, so that's the way it works if it's your idea. If it's someone else's idea, often I get hired by directors or, or, or producers where they've got a concept, but they're not writers. So they've got a great idea, usually directors, yeah, they have brilliant ideas, and then, but they, you know, it's like, I don't know how to get this on screen. And they come to me with like a two, three page synopsis, go, here's the story idea. What would you want to do with it? And I then say, this is what I do with it. And they then give you money up front, basically, to write out that concept. It's not an option or anything because it's their, it's their story, it's their concept. And so they then give you development funds up front, usually anywhere between, I write very quickly, I, I, turn, I churn out scripts anywhere between four to eight weeks. But that's because I'm very lucky, I'm able to work solely full time as a writer. Um, some people, you know, who are juggling other jobs take anywhere from six months to like a year to write stuff. Um, plus I enjoy doing it, so it makes, it makes it a lot easier. If you enjoy doing something, it makes it miles easier. Um, so they, with that, if it's their idea, they will come to you and you're hired purely as the screenwriter and they will give you the money up front to write it and then rather than 5% screenwriter's fee, you get 2.5% because it's not your original concept, it's someone else's. So when they shoot it, they then give you 2.5% of the budget. Um, I would recommend going to university, definitely. From a write, I mean, they can't really teach you how to write at university. The only way you can teach yourself, the only way you can learn how to write is by writing. There's a correct way to format stuff, which you can learn in workshops, which you can, could, they may have like a semester at university where you have a screenwriter came in. I, I, I had that briefly. And I, I go to unis and colleges and, do, and run workshops, you know, for people who are interested in screenwriting. Um, what, the reason I would, the reason I would say to go to university, you know, from a screenwriting perspective, and also if you wanted to be a director, yeah, the best thing to do is actually just go out there, direct stuff, write your own stuff, or get a camera and just film stuff. So, you know, make, having a degree isn't going to make any difference to you getting a job as a screenwriter or a director. It makes no difference at all. But the reason, uh, uh, the reason I would advocate it is because the three years at university were the best years of my life. Brilliant. You have such a great time. What better experience, if you want to be a writer, than actually experiencing that aspect of life? Okay. 
Uh, well, my name's Alan Smith, and um, I'm a lighting cameraman. Um, I started uh, my career at Bournemouth College of Art, so I guess at your age, I was at Bournemouth, film and television. That was three years, and um, then I was lucky to get a job at the BBC, uh, just like that. But it wasn't in the job that I wanted. I got a job as a film examiner in a film library, and I stuck there for three years, but it was the same department as the department I really wanted to get into, which was the film department. So um, I got there within three years and was a trainee, trainee assistant film cameraman. And after a year you come out and you are an assistant, full assistant. And I was a full assistant for years, a long time, but I had a great time. So I did four years drama, four years documentaries, and then I started doing operating on things like Bergerac's and um, little dramas and a lot of documentary and that was all on film and then in, in the 90s tape came out videotape and all the cameramen didn't want to do that so I volunteered said yeah I'll do it I'll do it and got myself a job for four years on an arts program called The Late Show and that was how I learnt how to mess around with tape uh, nobody ever watched the program but hey I didn't care because it went out every night so I was able to see what I'd shot, and that way you learn. And then from there on I went through to the 2000 and uh, the department closed. And so I ended up um, going freelance, so I've been freelance ever since the last 13 years. Um, I, I No, I work on my own films now. Um, I do my own. In fact, I've just been doing one last week. I've, that's, I've just come back from doing a little film on my own, which was hard work, I can tell you. Um, having to do the sound, do the camera, do the directing, and I'm trying to get a friend to do the editing because I don't know how to do that. So, um, yeah. Your duties as an assistant cameraman were to put the clapperboard on, uh, you'd change all the film, you'd reload, because we had three magazines with 400 foot reels in, and um, each magazine was um, 10 minutes long. And it was mostly ne negative that we were shooting, colour neg. Uh, that was then my job to uh, log it and send the rushes to the labs at the end of the day to uh, have them processed and overnight they'd be processed, they'd come back the next day and uh, somebody else in the department would check that the rushes were good, in focus, not scratched, etc. Um, so, and also basically you were carrying a lot of the kit, you were packing, you were basically the cameraman's assistant. You'd drive the car, you'd do an awful lot of things but you wouldn't actually film very often. <laughs> 